Hello everybody, it's Randy from Jacob's Triangle Homestead. Welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about National Pollinators Week. And in celebration of that, we have come to the haagen what is the name of this? The haagen Bee Haven at the UC Davis um, campus. And what this is, is it's basically a bee garden. You know, it's got lots of flowers and plants that are planted here to attract pollinators, bees. But that's not really what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is getting the little people here knowledgeable and interested in our pollinators. And I, you know, I went to, I went to the national, what is it called? I went to the pollinator pollinator.org website. I'll put a, a link down at the bottom of the screen. When I went to the pollinator.org website, this is you know what you see, and of course you've got your links up here, you know, who who we are, why pollinators, resources, you know, all that good stuff. That is not what I was looking for. I'm looking for something for kids, so I started scrolling down. And of course, you see, you know, different things that you can download. Take action, you know, get your governor or whatever government officials to work on a pollinator week. All the way down, here's good information. Still not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is here near the bottom just for fun, fun stuff for kids. And the first thing is, you know, five things kids can do to help pollinators. That is something that you may want to possibly download and share with your kids. It's something that, you know, they can read through and, you know, learn from. Build a bee condo. That is something that if you are in an urban area, you may want to consider because having a bee, a honey beehive in your backyard with neighbors around, is not a good idea. However, building a bee condo is something in an urban garden that would be beneficial to you and not invasive on your neighbors because these are bees. They're mason bees or solitary bees. They're not aggressive like honeybees. You know, they still can sting, but they're not as aggressive as honeybees are, and they will still be very beneficial to your garden. Here's an example of a bee house, as they call it here in the, the bee garden, that has been built by UC Davis. The next thing that you can see here is a pollinator puzzle. And that's basically, you know, a crossword puzzle that the kids can do. It has, you know, different different pollinator words that they can put fill into the the puzzle. And down here, you know, of course you've got a couple of recipes that the kids can do. And this one here is something that would be interesting to you know, kids and adults both. And this talks about a specialized pollinator for chocolate production and how this specialized pollinator's absence is responsible for what they're going to be calling the chocolate shortage. It's very interesting. You may want to go check that out. I also did a search on Pollinator Week coloring pages and found, you know, different pages that you can print out for your kids to color. And some of them, like this one that I did print out for my kids, you know, it's got different things about, you know, the different types of pollinators that there are. And this one is available from, I believe it's from greatsunflowers.org. I think I had to search for it on here, but I was able to find it. And printed this one out. This one is available from the University of Wyoming. But there are, you know, some that you can print out here. Some of these sites that you can go to, you actually have to pay to download the pictures. You know, there's some of them that I saw that's like a dollar fifty a page. I didn't do any of those, but they also have good subject matter and you know things that you may want your kids to to learn about to color and read 
there are different things that you can do to go out and get information to share with your kids and help them to learn and understand about our pollinators, what they do for our gardens and for our food supply in general. And it'll also help them to understand that bees aren't bad and bees do something else besides give us honey. So, what else do we have, guys? Honey. Honey, yeah, what else? More what, honey. What do pollinators do? Give honey. They don't just give honey. Do you know what pollinators do? No? I thought we talked about pollinators. No, I forgot what you they did. You forgot. Where's mm -hmm. the pencil sharpener? As you can see, coloring uh, these uh, are more important uh, than what pollinators do. Nonetheless, I still think this is something that you need to share with your little people. They need to understand what's going on out in the garden. You know, it's not just that you stick a plant in the ground or put a seed in the ground. It grows up into a plant and boom, like magic, there's fruit on it. There's some other things that happen there that they need to learn about. Basically, you need to teach your kids the birds and bees about the birds and bees and the flowers and the trees. And the thing is, is if you teach them now, later on when you have to have the talk, you've already got a little bit of groundwork set, so it's not quite such an uncomfortable conversation. So we're going to go ahead and I'll wander around and let you take a look at some of the flowers that they have here in the garden before we wrap up the video. So there you go. That is National Pollinators Week a little bit different this year than it has been in the past from what I've seen on their website because of the pandemic that's going on. I want to thank Marie from Salon Girl Gardens for inviting me to participate in her, what she's not calling a collaboration for National Pollinators Week. So anyways, thank you Marie for inviting me to be a part of this. And until next time, I'll see you then.